What up, people? It's me, Manny, and welcome to my new spot. This is my new setup. Uh, I'm standing up now. There's no TV. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to be permanent, but for now, this will do. Anyways, today is Halloween. That is, if I finish this edit on time. And you know what they say, if it's Halloween, it must be Saw. Yes, this year we finally got a new Saw movie. Saw 10 or Saw X, which goes back to its roots. So what better time than now to rewatch the very first Saw movie that started it all, which I have right here in 4K, the Steelbook Edition. Freaking cool. Now, the quality of these Saw movies go up and down. Not all of them are great, but the first one had to be really good to spawn all these sequels, right? Well, let's discuss. Saw was released on October 29th, 2004, and it was written by Lee Whannell. I hope I said that right. And it was directed by James Wan in his directorial debut. And man, their story was inspirational because they were just two film students from Australia who did a short film version of Saw on their own that got noticed and picked up and the rest is history. Oh man, how I wish I had that luck with one of my short films. Now, I never saw Saw when it first came out in 2004. I'm not the biggest fan of horror movies, and this franchise did look like torture porn. Mindless killing. But in 2009, when they were promoting the crap out of Saw 6, that movie looked very interesting. So I finally gave in and saw the first Saw movie on the Sci-Fi Channel. And after that, I was hooked. It wasn't just mindless killing and torture porn. The story was actually very interesting. So then I watched the rest of the Saw sequels up to five, which some of them were torture porn actually. And then I saw Saw 6 in theaters and that one was really good. Now the Saw franchise was so successful that they released a movie each year around Halloween from 2004 to 2010, with Saw 7 being the final chapter since their box office returns was diminishing with each release. I guess there was some Saw fatigue. And Saw 7 was f***ing terrible. You know what? Real quick, here are my brief thoughts on the Saw sequels. Now, I'm going by memory here. I haven't seen these movies in years. Okay, Saw 2? Amazing. Saw 3? Pretty good, though a bit too dark. Saw 4? Meh. Saw 5? Very meh. Saw 6 was incredible. Back to form. Saw 7? A horrible gore fest mess with no f substance. Jigsaw, aka Saw 8, was actually pretty enjoyable. I liked it. Spiral, aka Saw 9, was not bad and a very good concept. And finally, Saw X, aka Saw 10, was also very good and Tobin Bell's time to shine as his character of John Kramer finally got the spotlight. Now, obviously, it's been over 10 years that I got into these movies, so I got a lot of good memories with these early films because my younger brother and cousin got into it at the same time as me. So yeah, great time seeing these movies together. And my brother used to look up Saw theories, and he figured out that, spoiler alert, Dr. Gordon was a Jigsaw accomplice before Saw 7 came out. So yeah, that was the best part of Saw 7. Maybe one day I can review the entire Saw franchise in its own video. But at the rate I'm getting views for these reviews, not likely. Not worth the time and effort if no one is watching. Now back to the original Saw, I'm gonna quickly go over the movie's story. So here's your spoiler warning. You've been warned. A photographer named Adam and an oncologist named Dr. Lawrence Gordon wake up in a disgusting bathroom with their ankles chained to a pipe. And in the middle of that bathroom, there's a dead body of a person who unalived himself, apparently, with a revolver in one hand and a cassette player in the other. Both Adam and Gordon have a tape in their pockets, so they retrieve the tape player to listen to it. Adam's tape tells him to survive, while Gordon's tape tells him to to kill Adam by six o'clock or else his wife and daughter will be killed. They start looking for more clues and Adam finds some hacksaws inside of the toilet. They try to saw off the chain, but it's not working. That's when Dr. Gordon realizes they're not supposed to cut through the chain. They're supposed to cut through their feet. He also realizes that the person behind this is none other than the infamous Jigsaw Killer, a serial killer who tests his victims will to live through lethal traps referred 
referred to as games. Dr. Gordon knows this because he was a suspect at one point. When Detective Tap and Sing found one of Dr. Gordon's pens in one of the Jigsaw crime scenes, he also tells Adam about how he listened to testimony from a heroin addict named Amanda Young, who survived Jigsaw's infamous reverse bear trap. We then go to the detectives that found Jigsaw's warehouse using the videotape from Amanda's game. They catch Jigsaw, but he slashes Detective Tap's throat and runs away while Detective Singh chases after him but gets killed by one of Jigsaw's traps. That was months ago, and now in the present time, we see that Detective Tap is obsessed with the Jigsaw case and still thinks that Dr. Gordon is the killer. We then see Dr. Gordon's wife and child being held at gunpoint and forced to call him on a cell phone that can only receive calls and tells him not to believe Adam's lies. Stop the lies! You're a liar! I need to know the truth! So Adam admits that he was paid by Detective Tap to spy on him and caught him going to a hotel to bang one of his medical students, which Gordon denies. I did not cheat on her! What do you care what I think anyway? I don't give a crap if you covered yourself in peanut butter and had a 15 hooker gangbang. It's 6 o'clock now and we see this guy named Sepp is the jigsaw killer apparently. So he goes to kill Gordon's family but they fight back and the wife manages to call Dr. Gordon but all he hears is them struggling and a gunshot so he panics and saw off his foot to escape. He shoots Adam and declares himself the winner of the game. We then see that Tap was spying on Gordon's house this whole time and he hears the gunshot and goes after Sepp. He chases him to the warehouse where he gets shot by Sepp. He goes into the bathroom to shoot Dr. Gordon for not killing Adam before 6 o'clock, but somehow Adam survived and beats Sepp to death with a toilet tank lid. Dr. Gordon crawls out of the bathroom to get some help and this is when my favorite part happens. As Adam Adam searches Sepp's body for a key, he finds a tape on him revealing that Sepp is not the Jigsaw killer, but another one of his victims. Then the corpse that was in the middle of the room starts to stand up. Holy sh**. Yo, the first time I saw this, I thought it was a f***ing zombie. Like this movie took a supernatural turn. But no, this is John Kramer, aka the Jigsaw Killer, who was in the room the entire time, pretending to be dead. I never suspected that. Dog, my mind was blown. And Charlie Clauser's Saw theme here? Mwah! Chef's kiss. So f***ing good. One of my favorite reveals and twists of all time. It still gives me goosebumps. But yes, to finish the story, Adam tries to shoot Jigsaw, but he electrocutes him. Then he goes to the door and says, Game over. And shuts the door, leaving Adam to die. The end. I love this story. So many twists, turns, and revelations. Who knew a movie of two guys stuck in a bathroom would be so engaging? And Jigsaw's motivation to put these people in these crazy traps is also very intriguing. Since he has cancer and doesn't have much time to live, he wants to make sure these other people have appreciation for their lives. Not saying I agree with his methods, but at least he has a philosophy, making this movie at least a bit more than just mindless killing. Now, there are a few plot details details here that don't make much sense. Like why is Adam being tested? What did he do? That's not really ever explained. Like is it just because he takes pictures of people and spies on them? But I mean he gets paid for that. And besides it's being very questionable if Adam deserves to be in this trap, why did he lock him in there? He survived so he won the game right? I don't know. And why did he sap Dr. Gordon here? I don't get it. That's mad random. And what did Sepp do exactly? Like, why is he being tested? I mean, he looks like a creep, I guess. Does he touch kids or something? Like, if these two guys didn't really do anything wrong, then Jigsaw's logic here is pretty flawed. Like, he's gonna start putting people in traps just because they jaywalked. But this was the first movie, and I guess Jigsaw wasn't really fleshed out yet. Like, years ago, I remember reading an article that said that Jigsaw was originally supposed to be more of a psychopath, that he actually enjoys them dying in this traps and that his whole philosophy stuff was bullshit. 
As I'm recording this, I don't know where that article is, but if I find it, I will put it into the description below. Anyways, another thing that bothered me here is when Adam gets shot, he seems fine later. I mean, just look at him swinging this toilet lid. Maybe Dr. Gordon knew where to shoot him so he's not seriously hurt? Uh, I don't know. Now, the only thing you can really argue that goes against the twist ending here is that you don't really get a chance to figure it out because John Kramer himself is not really shot here except for this part right here but that doesn't bother me that much i still really enjoyed the twist because then you have to guess that the body in the middle of the freaking room was gonna get up anyways so it still works now the performances by lee wannell and carrie elwes always get a lot of flack but in my humble opinion they still do a good job there wasn't really a moment or instance here that really took me out of the movie because of their performance i actually really liked the escalation that dr gordon goes through here how he's so calm in the beginning but as the movie goes on it just builds and builds until he goes bat crazy and desperate to get out of there like i believe he would cut his own foot off i bought it like do people want him to be calm during this like my family needs me ow ow i have to cut my own foot off ow no you're gonna have to have a nervous breakdown in order to do that sh now this movie was shot with only a million dollar budget and sometimes it's very noticeable but it does so with style and grit that works in his favor for the most part for having mostly just one location which is the bathroom there is shot pretty well again very good performances in my opinion a great and compelling story even though some of these characters don't deserve to be in these traps which is one of the things i really appreciate about saw x because if there was ever a time where people deserve to be in a jigsaw trap you can really make that argument here but i digress now I can't stress this enough that this movie had one of the best twist endings of all time. And if I could score that on its own, it will easily be a 10 out of 10. Ugh, and the Saw theme, I love it. But no, this movie is not perfect, but it still holds up. What about you? What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below because I give Saw a nine out of 10. Well, folks, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the very first Saw movie, which in my opinion still holds up pretty damn good. Also, it has one of the best twist endings of all time. Now, if you made it this far and you liked the video, please give the video a like and share it all over social media and subscribe to my YouTube page so I can keep doing these videos as I'm still not getting that many views. And yeah, these videos are kind of time consuming to put together. Anyways, this has been a review of the first Saw, Just Cause. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game.